Hey guys, here's another video that I recorded about a year ago when I had all my hair and I was about 20 pounds heavier. Anyway, good questions that were put to me, so I figured it was worth publishing this video. Better late than never. All right, if you have any questions about the topics discussed in this video, feel free to answer in the comments below. And uh, thanks for watching. Cheers. Somebody asked me about the structure of my mentoring program and how and how it relates to becoming a professional developer. There is a philosophy, there is a structure that I've been teaching for many years. And of course, when I put out the mentoring program about two years ago in January, so two years ago, I implemented that philosophy, that strategy into the context of the mentoring program. So let me just outline this for our people. This will be helpful to you, even if you don't do the mentoring program with me, which I don't understand why you wouldn't. But anyway, I'm just kidding around. Um, all right, let's just jump into it. Uh, the key to getting into development comes down to these six uh, steps, these six uh, things here. Step number one, learn the fundamentals. That includes the languages, for me, the best languages, of course, are the web languages. So it's HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, PHP, Python, SQL. SQL and Python are not necessarily web, but they're uh, highly used in that context. And you also got to learn things like the infrastructure of the web, HTTP, client server, request response cycle. You got to learn soft skills. You got to learn how to communicate well, how to do write proper emails and uh, to people, you got to communicate professionally, verbally, written. You got to learn how your brain operates, how other people's brains operate, so you can have good, uh, what's, what's the EQ, emotional, uh, emotional skills there, EQ. <laughs> Let's look that up. Hold on a second. Yeah, IQ. Versus EQ. I'm getting so old, I forget these basic things now. IQ tests a measure of your ability to solve problems, use logic, and grasp, or communicate complex ideas. That we knew. EQ, I don't even know, I know what it is. It's a measure of ability to recognize emotions in yourself and others and use that awareness to guide your decisions. Yeah, but what does, e what does EQ stand for? Emotional what? Emotional intelligence? I guess. Emotional. Why wouldn't it be EI? Anyway, whatever. You know what EQ is. So it's good to have IQ and EU, EQ, uh, to be successful in this game. Not just coding, all aspects of life. All right, so you learn your fundamentals. You get your EQ going. Uh, you, then you build a portfolio site. Step number two, build a portfolio site live. Why? Because it's live. you got to get out of tutorials. Stop hanging around tutorials. Number three. You do two to three small freelance projects for free. Why for free? It's easier to get projects that are free. Also, because you're just starting out, you don't you shouldn't be expected to get paid at this point. You're still learning. So you do two to three small projects for free for some. Could be a local coffee shop, independent coffee shop, a garage, a dentist, doesn't matter. Just get something up. Why? Because you gotta show prospective employers that actually you can work with people, you can execute and get something done. Once you've done that, you mount those three projects on your portfolio site, which you built in step two. And then what you want to do is you want to get your resume and your LinkedIn up to date and in shape, right? So I won't get into specifics here, but yeah, you want to get your LinkedIn up to date so you can start uh, making connections there. Uh, so you can get hot leads into jobs as opposed to cold leads. Again, We'll have to get into that in another video. Then you got to learn the local job market. You got to study the local job market, see where the demand is. You may want to be a uh, Ruby developer, but if nobody wants to hire Ruby developers, what's the point of that? Now, there might be Ruby jobs out there, depending where you live. I don't know. But uh, you got to study the job market, see where the demand is, and then align your skill set accordingly. Number six. You start applying for jobs. Now, when you apply for jobs, you got to make sure your resume and your LinkedIn align with the particular type of job you're applying for. And then you apply for the jobs and uh, you have to expect rejections. When you get rejections, uh, the first form of rejection is no response. You don't send multiple res you don't say send the same resume to the same person over and over again. That's just going to annoy them. Send it once, that's it. If they don't respond, that's normal. Don't get, don't worry about it. 
Uh, when they do respond and you get an interview and they don't hire you, which could happen, uh, that's okay. Just ask them why and just keep improving. The process of getting a job is part of the skill set. Uh, the first job is hardest to get. It gets a lot easier after a first job because then you have experience. And then, then it's red carpet treatment once you've got like a couple of years experience. Then it's easy. But that first job, I've given you the tricks here, the six steps and what you have to do to get there. Let me conclude. It was an email I responded to somebody here. So uh, I just, I'm just going to say what I said here. Uh, the above is just an outline, the six steps. Here's my shameless self-promotion. The mentoring program, exactly that. You are mentor guided through the process. That's the key difference. People ask me about my solo learn courses versus the mentoring program. The big difference is you get a bunch of content only the mentoring people get. Number two, more importantly, you get access to the mentoring. That's bi-weekly group coaching sessions with me and others, but I'm always there. And you can get your, if you run into the code problems, you get into portfolio issues, you get into project issues, I'm there to help. Besides the 300 plus lessons on coding and program, we have over 60 hours, well, it's 70 now. We have a private Q&A from the program you can watch. We also have live bi-weekly Zoom meetings that you are free to attend. And I'm always there answering question and questions and leading the discussions. The Zoom sessions themselves are worth the price of admission. That's what people tell you. An interesting aspect about my program, which makes it valuable, it's become a commercial, I guess. Uh, you will find that we have people of all levels in the program. We have total beginners all the way up to CTOs. The community is growing and becoming more valuable every day. Hope that helps. Anyway, that was my uh, email to this dude a while back. So there you go. A while back, 10 days ago. I hope you found this useful. I'm Uncle Steph.